would I do a stream where I tell you guys? Oh, I just saw the stream, by the way. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a programming stream soon, just so you know. So when I start, yeah. When I start talking to myself, you won't think I'm crazy. Which I guess we'll start now. Somebody asked, would you do a stream where you tell us more about projects you worked on, anything on Nintendo Game Block? I don't know. I mean, a lot of stuff like contracts that I did for other uh, game companies and stuff uh, are still under NDA of one kind or another. And console NDAs especially are really harsh. So that a lot of the interesting stuff that you would want to know, I cannot talk about. And that is very sad, but it's the way it is. Starting in 1.5 minutes, or something like that. Hmm. Okay, let's get started. Let me make sure the camera is pointing the right direction. That's pretty good. I don't like the zoom on this camera. I need a wider angle camera. Well, hi everybody. Thanks for showing up. What's going on here is uh, sometime in a couple of weeks or something like that, I was going to give a little presentation at the company here about what we're, we're working on and what we're going to do. And I just can't stomach the idea of using PowerPoint for yet another presentation. It's just, it's so annoying and, you know, like many programs, it gets more complex and bloated over time and yet does very little that I actually want it to do. You know, just like after having made a presentation, like changing background colors of slides is so hard, you know. Um, so. I'm going to just make my own thing. And uh, the long-term view is that it's going to work substantially differently than something like PowerPoint. It'll be built for nonlinear presentations where you know, maybe you have a primary presentation that you're giving, but you might have a long-term database of useful slides that you can pop off into and, and move around in or whatever to discuss ancillary points or if things come up in questions and answers and stuff like that. Basically, something that's more designed for interactive presentations uh, rather than like I memorized a bunch of words and I'm going to say them at the audience presentations. But we're probably not going to get to anything too sophisticated today because I'm going to start from nothing and start building it up. Although, you know, nothing is um, relative, right? I'm going to actually use a bunch of code from the Sokoban game. So I'm going to start a new application folder. And I'm going to start building an application from there, but it's going to like load files from Sokoban to do stuff like the hot loader and 
uh, I don't know, like image loading and font loading and all that stuff. Well, font loading is in the library. Anyway, the point is a lot of these things eventually, when the language gets uh, more finalized, will be in libraries that users can use, but it hasn't been factored that way yet. And so if I start having two programs using the same code rather than just one, it'll expose places where, you know, there's dependencies into things where there shouldn't be and whatnot. And it'll help clean it up and encapsulate it a little bit more. So what I'm going to do today, uh, also I'm not going to try to do a graphical editor for the slideshow yet. Um, I'm going to have it be a text file that I edit and is hot loaded. And then once that's good, uh, I can do an editor for it a little later on by adapting some of the game editor code that we have. So that's the basic idea. People say they seem to like Keynote. That's fine, but I don't have a Mac, and I'm not ever going to use a Mac as my primary machine, at least not in the foreseeable future. So there is that. All right. Um, oh, and the other thing is I just want, you know, I want a slideshow program that is very good at hooking into native code for doing visualizations of scientific computing kinds of things because I think I'm going to want to do a lot of that. So, yeah, we'll see. But, you know, the main goal is just to have fun with it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to my C folder. I'm going to make, uh, I guess I'm just going to call it show because I don't know what the real name is going to be. So let's not think too hard about a name. Um, I'm going to go to show, and I'm going to make a main, and we're not, we're not even going to have, um, uh, I'm not going to have a meta program yet, unless it turns out that I need one, I'm just going to go straight. So I'm going to go, I'm going to import like basic, right, I guess I don't say that, and I'm going to import print, and I'm going to have a main, right, and... Uh, that's pretty good, and let's let's run it from the compiler, just so we don't have to. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, before we do anything, oh, you know what? I'm not going to put this in source control yet because I would need to do a server operation to make a new repository, and I didn't have the foresight to do that off the stream, and I don't want to log in my server and bog things down, so we won't we won't do any source control yet. Um, all right, so uh, my good compiler executable is all right, so that worked. It said hello, sailor, and uh, you know, I probably can run main.exe now that also prints that. So we've got a program, so that, that wasn't hard. Um, now I'm going to start pulling in code. So I'm going to want to load a slideshow, and I'm going to want to, you know, hot load it all the time, right? So I'm going to go looking into uh, Sokoban for things to pull over. Right? I suppose I should have made a source folder here. At, yeah, let me say make the source move main dot main dot Star, and I'll go show. All right, so I made a source folder. Del star dot ops. And you know what? We're going to make a run tree. Let's, let's just sort of fill some stuff out. Let me make this more visual. Let's see, show, where's my show? There it is. So I'm gonna make a data folder. I'm gonna basically structure this the way that I do game data. And so we're gonna want, um, we're gonna want some fonts, because we're not gonna rely on operating system fonts. Because that's a really bad idea, because then you go to another computer, it doesn't have the same fonts installed, or they're slightly different, or whatever. So actually, there's going to be some, like, quote-unquote system fonts that are basically built into the slideshow program. 
But then anytime you use a font in your own slideshow, it'll get copied into the slideshow, so that if you run it on a different computer or even a different version of the slideshow program, uh, it'll use the same font, and you won't have any of these like weird passive-aggressive errors that happen when you move your PowerPoint presentation around to different machines. All right. Um, I don't know what else we're going to have there, so we're just going to leave it like that. Um, you know what? I'm going to put all my slideshows in here uh, to start with, although eventually you're going to want them in whatever folder you have them in. But just as a, you know, as a development thing, uh, you know, while I'm building out the functionality, I'll just put them in there. Oh, can I move my face camera? Right. Uh, let's put it down there. Uh, last I checked, PowerPoint didn't bundle fonts, or at least the um, the outcome of moving a PowerPoint presentation from one machine to another is very often that your text changes size, or wraps differently, uh, or you know a few other weird things happen. I've, I've definitely had extreme unhappiness from trying that. All right, so let's see what we load here. Uh, load. What are we going to want? We're going to want OpenGL, we're going to want pool, math, uh, file, compiler, font, random. Oh, look, we've got two maths. Let's take that out. Um, we're going to want to play music eventually, but not yet. Um, probably Unicode. So we're going to load all that stuff up. And then what are we going to want from, well, let's make sure that compiles. That really should. Otherwise, we've got problems. In the wrong folder. All right. Wait, why did that not print any of the other compiler output? What? Is that due to me moving the folder? That's really weird. Huh. going on, people? We may have a compiler bug. This may turn into compiler bug debugging at the time. Okay, cool, right, so there's a dependency there. File, that's no surprise. Math, yeah, so all these guys depend. Font is probably weird. I made okay. This is a problem because we're gonna want to need the font stuff. I introduced a compiler bug, or maybe it's not. Uh, let me make a to do. Um, show. Why do uh, does the compiler not build an executable when we import font with no medical program? Um, that seems weird. It seems really weird. It's just a bug that I haven't encountered before. So uh, what I may do is actually put in a meta program anyway, because we're going to want one. Um, That'll make our beginning a little bit more complex, but you know, not that much more complex. So, uh, see you later. So this is going to be the meta program. And we're just going to start up by acting on that, right, and then I'm going to copy some stuff from Sokoba about building, right, so I'm going to get build debug and build release 
start a workspace. Well, do I want to factor that into something? That's that's fully. We're just going to make a note that we copied this and cut it out. Could be something factorable here. All right, so we're going to get rid of the bananas. Uh, we're going to do error checking because we want that. That's one good reason that we actually do want an error, uh, a meta program, is because we can start doing error checking kinds of things beyond what the compiler usually does. So we're not going to have profiling for now, and if we do, we'll factor something out so that we can just use it. Um, so for those of you who haven't seen the streams, a workspace just means, hey, we're going to compile a program inside this container. This uh, uh, It's effectively a container, although it's not um, at this time sandboxed, so if you were to hammer on other things, you could create problems. Um, all right, so we need setup debug and setup release, which are just the things that set our build options. So we don't ever have a make file or anything like that, right? We just, um, we just set the options that we want in regular user code, which is the other reason to have a metaprogram. Um, oh, get build options, because I don't have compiler and we don't have build so we're going to set up a logger we're going to get less pasty eventually but <laughs> to start with so uh, one of the things that I'm doing here is that you know, so Sokoban had this meta program that grew up around how to compile it. And it's the first non-trivial meta program that I'd shown. I'd, I'd shown in demos, you know, smaller ones, but this is like a real thing. It's, you know, uh, 700 lines just about. And so I want to make another one and let it diverge and then see what the commonalities are between them. And that'll tell me what can usefully be factored and what can't. Whereas if you decide a priori, like, oh, let's just factor a bunch of things because that's how you do programming, then you're likely to build a lot of useless abstractions. Um, so we're not doing profiling or bananas. Um, and it might be worth, well, we can talk a different time in a compiler stream about how it may be worth um, doing, uh, making it more modular so that instead of calling out to bananas places like this, that it like automatically interfaces. You know what I'm saying? All right, so workspace is started, workspace is completed. Let's define all this stuff. That's going to be factorable. There's probably going to be like some workspace manager that has this stuff on it that's factorable. Uh, okay, setup. I thought I defined setup release. No, I just, what? Oh, setup fast. Let's not worry about that yet. Setup release. We get rid of setup fast. We don't want to run main. We want to run build debug. Process build events. And again, so process build events gets called once per compiler event, and um, which is, for example, hey, this code got type checked or whatever. And so this is going to be checking for things that we don't care about. So really, we're doing almost nothing in this loop, and it's going to be an interesting thought about should we try to modularize that? Oh, do error checking.
right? Hey, all right, so we've got a program. It runs. Let's make sure it's totally up to date. Oh wait, that is an old one because it says hello sailor. Where is this one going? Oh, because we set the executable to be called Soko whatever. Uh, first, Soko debug. No, we're going to call them show debug. And show. Show. Oh, is it show debug.exe? Did I compile the bug? Where are we? Show debug.obs. Oh, it's in run tree. That's what the other thing you get by getting a, making a better program is you get to be picky about where you want to put the executables and stuff. So this is all good. Um, we're actually, this is way more of a meta program than I need right now, but it's good because it's all useful. 163 lines. Any like, I mean, I don't want to rat hole too much on this because if, uh, I'm probably going to leave by about 8.15 or 8. So I want to at least get to like, we have stuff on the screen by then. Um, But are there any questions about what that was all about? So I'm also now going to build out the structure of things. Um, so we're going to have a should quit, just like Sokoban does. It's not a game, so we're not going to say game. I'll get rid of all this. Well, we'll just say do one. That's very easy. Very easy. Do one frame. Let's put this down at the bottom. So basically, now. There's always like the stuff that happens, like, hey, we have to do the OpenGL things to get anything on the screen. Um, and there's going to be per frame things, and there's going to be init time things. Um, so I'm looking for the per frame. Oh, you know. Let's just go to OpenGL. Because here's the thing. The Sokoban game renders to an HDR back buffer and tone maps that into LDR for display, which I would normally be like, oh, that's going to be awesome. Let's do that. Except that you'd have problems color matching on bitmaps and stuff. So you kind of want the option to do that for 3D scenes and then not for 2D scenes. And I, I have a feeling if we render a 3D scene, It'll just be completely into an off-screen buffer and then put on as a viewport rectangle or something. I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, so we're going to do it in LDR at first. Um, or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll have to add that option. right? So here's where we're going to start loading 
Um, I'm just going to hard code these paths for now, and we can generate these strings later or something if we want. Um, so I'm going to want to load this, and the problem is this may start to. Uh, well, maybe I don't want all this. You know what? I maybe I don't. Um, I don't. I want to use. There is an actual H, uh, OpenGL like user level library interface, and I want that for now. Um, so. I basically want this uh, part. I'll put my init OpenGL in here. We're going to create an OpenGL context. which we need a window. Um, what's a good, uh, let's see 1600 by 900 for now. We're just going to hard code that and we'll figure out the dimensions of the window a little later on. Um, actually, this is going to be here. We'll make this, we want to be able to globally get at the window, but we're kind of going to call it the H window. We'll probably open more than one window eventually, because like if you're going to do presenter view, you want to draw a different thing in presenter view than in, in what the people see. So uh, we're going to say create win or just init window. just going to do that. Um, let me find out where I create the window. Ah. Right, so we define an OS specific. Let's do that. So we have a command line option for window that we might want to copy. Let's do this one. Frickin' windows. Let's do that at the top of main, because you really want to do this. set our working directory. This is something I like to do because, you know, there's this idea in both Unix and Windows that applications run in whatever folder you happen to be in, which is fine for some classes of application, but for something like this, it's really not fine. You want it to like know where its data is and set 
itself accordingly, but you don't want to like have to install the thing and require it to like read registry entries or something. I want to just be able to copy some files off Dropbox and be able to run this thing or whatever, right? I don't want an install step at all. So, uh, you know, here we look at what's our executable and, um, you know, then we look for the slash on it, cut from there, and then uh, set our working directory, right? Um, so, then we're going to need... What are we gonna? What else are we gonna need? Uh, okay, we're gonna need OS Windows and OS Linux because that's gonna give us stuff like get path of running executable. And then I don't know. Maybe I should start to compile this soon. It still won't compile because something will be wrong. Um, well, I, let, let's well let's try to compile it. Something will be wrong. Yes. So again, I can replace this string later or define it as something else. Okay. Um, console initted. We're going to want the console, I guess. See if we can load that. Uh, yeah, we're gonna want all this stuff eventually. So we're gonna be front heavy in terms of like loading a bunch of things and then dealing with that. Um, the language string. This is something that we would change later on if we decide to display in a different language. Back buffer heights. Wait, we had back buffer. Oh, it's it's got to be. These can't be in file scope. Other people want to see them. Okay, so many things, so many things. Okay, scroll bar, let's get that. Because the console wants that and the text input want that. So right now we're missing a bunch of console stuff. We're missing the succeeded macro, which is a Windows thing. Um, I guess we want input. Is it called input? I don't know where that's defined, which is a little bit interesting. Maybe I just defined it in, uh, in the application level, which would not be that great. Let's see. Mixer OS Windows. So Mixer one thirty two. Yeah, so I just defined that here when really it should be. I'm going to put it in basic for Windows. I'm not sure. Like in reality, we have to figure out in the long term um, how that stuff is going to be organized. I'm not sweating it too much yet. Okay, so now we've got a smaller number of things. Um, so here's what's going on that we're missing. Um, Init console fonts wants a hard-coded font folder. That seems bad. So if we're going to modularize that, 
uh, that probably needs um, us to pass a folder in, for example, to the init function. That would be a reasonable thing to do. Um, we're looking for things like uh, console x0 and uh, console yb and whatever, which um, before those were just globals that we were poking to control the console, but if we're going to factor that console out into a reusable thing, that's maybe not the best way to do it. Or if it is a good way to do it, uh, you know, which I'm agnostic about, we could at least put it in the console file. So it's going to be defined and then we can poke at it when we want to use it. Um, so let's make those few changes. Uh, uh, circle bar console uh, font folder and then I'm just going to have to fix Sokoban later. I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm breaking Sokoban temporarily um, and then backup font name, all these things, right? Unfortunately, I don't know if I have a way to lowercase in Emacs. I, oh, wait. That's close. Was that Alt? I accidentally halt, hit Alt-C when I meant to hit Alt-X, and it mostly did the job for me. That was great. All right. Um, we're not even going to call... We're not even going to init the console yet. Um, and this is just going to be that. All right, so console who defines that? Player control, that's weird. Oh, because it's in console visuals. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow. All right. I'm going to come up with a more formalized way to do this. So here's the thing. Um, right now, when we build a non-developer build, we don't load the console because we don't want to ship that in the game. I mean, maybe we should, but we want we at least want the option to have the developer console not turned on in the final game um, because it's very clean to like not be including all this code that's not involved in the game. The thing is, when we load the tweak file, we don't have a way in the tweak file to say, oh, this is developer only, you know, ignore it otherwise. Um, and so we have this thing where console visuals is defined elsewhere than it should be, um, just so that we can not load the console file and still uh, do this. But I think I think this is a signal that the time has come that, like, look at all these freaking colors that we define. Um, I think the time has come to be when I go to fix Sokoban, which maybe I'll do on a stream tomorrow night or something, fix all these errors that I'm introducing right now. Um, I think we'll tell the variable system that if we're in non-developer mode, then anything in this particular folder is, uh, just ignore it, right? Just ignore it. And in the meantime, we'll just do this. So, boom. So now that stuff's gonna be defined just fine. All right. Run command. It's 
going to be a good question how abstracted I want to make all these things. I'm, not, I'm going to say limited for now. I'm not going to try to abstract out all the graphics stuff that we're seeing up here. I'm just going to let that be... Uh, that's a whole uh, modularizable problem of its own of like, how do we want to abstract what the interface is for rendering without punishing performance too much? And we can think about that later, but I don't want to rat hole on that kind of stuff right now. So, um, but so run command is an interesting one because that's like, what does the console do? So here I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say, sir run command proc. So this is just going to be, um, and I'm actually, because that's an assert, I'm going to go into the Sokoban to do and say define run command proc on the console. Because that one we might forget about because it's not a compile time error. So um, we're going to go to the console. Oh wait, I copied editor visuals. I didn't want to do that. That's a whole separate. We'll, we'll eventually put that, do the same thing, but we don't need to mess with that right now. Okay, so console visuals, and then the actual struct console is going to be, is it not defined in this file? Am I crazy? Or do we just, oh, we just maybe don't have one. We're just using globals, that's right. But that's right, um, which I think is a fine way to approach it when your language uh, makes that reasonable. So, um, what did I call it? Run command proc. I'm going to say run command proc is some procedure that goes from a string to void Oh, and my assert is picky. It doesn't do implicit chorus to bool right now. Um, okay, operating folder, that's just... Uh, we're just didn't define that. Uh, hwind is missing argument. So we call our window window handle. Window handle. Um, well, uh, init window and open GL. Let's do that. Init window and open GL. Uh, width, height. So whatever the width and height are, we're going to get from there. So let's go back to Sokoban. Um, Not forget to swap buffers. Well, we'll do that later. Okay, init window. Yeah, I mean, this whole thing looks like it's factorable into something. It's a funny thing. So what this is doing is it says, look, if if we got a command line option that tells us what the width and height are, then use that. Uh, otherwise. You know, um, figure something out based on the desktop size, right? And then we create the window and we set our render target with the height. Um, which this seems, that doesn't seem totally factorable by itself, but maybe there'll be like a window utilities uh, routine. Um, so let me just say, Candidate for window utilities? I don't know. Um, uh, 
true if set on command line args. All right. So I guess this will be um, So this is going to say init window, and then this is going to be render width and render height, or back buffer now uh, render. Right. Okay, so now we're getting down to on the screen. We have two different things. We have core dot time info, which is um, it's interesting that the, the you know these things expect to get time in that way. I'm not sure what the best way to do that is and, and factor it out, but I'll be thinking about it. In the meantime, I'm just going to duplicate that. And then we have shader stuff. So like starting immediate rendering, which is when you just draw triangles and setting the shader. Um, so we basically see two categories of things here, which is good because we had a lot more than two categories of things before. So let me just start with copying this time info. Copy all this stuff. You know what? Let's do this. So So then that's going to have update time in it. And then we'll just call update time. Main loop. Update. Last time. Last time. And DT Max. Well, actually, no, I'll do that now. So we'll just say dt max is a float, and you pass that to update time. All right, we are working toward having an actual executable with a lot of stuff in it, which is still not going to resemble a slideshow program, but it'll at least be a running thing that opens a window, and that's a start. Um, all right. Let's make our own, because we don't want to get a lot of the complications of the OpenGL and Sokoban game. Oops. Yeah. I am going to load all the extensions, even though we're not using them all. And then I'm going to have a drastically So this stuff, so I'm about to paste in another 220 lines of stuff, which uh, uh, 
I mean, it'll be less because I'm going to cut out all the shadow map stuff and whatever, but there's some amount of stuff here that's generalizable, right? So we already have, in, in the modules folder, we have a general GL interface that, you know, basically implements the OpenGL API, right? All this stuff is stuff that's above the OpenGL API that we still want to do. And... Um, you know, the slideshow program isn't going to want to do everything that uh, everything that Sokoban wanted to do, but it's, you know, it's a non-zero amount of stuff that they have in common. And I don't like, you know, the old OpenGL tradition was there were like 78 user libraries that you would like link in addition to the core OpenGL, and I didn't like that either. So what I would like to do is figure out what's kind of in common and provide something useful that does that with maybe a way to expand it, right? And so, you know, we're just gonna see how this comes out. So I'm doing some stuff here, um, creating a context with all these fricking major and minor versions. Like this stuff is like the library can't really do this for you, this is just, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, maybe it's a little simplifiable, but this is sort of the tax that you pay to work in OpenGL, really. Um, I don't know. Like, at some point, it wants to be a user-level library. But I don't like that approach particularly much. And then, so that was the Windows version of some stuff that I scrolled through, and this is the Linux version. X11. Okay, so let's go to the stuff that we actually also want, which is immediate begin and immediate flush, which gives us our vertex rendering. Oh boy, you know, this, all this stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put at the top of here to do approximately eighty to ninety percent of the stuff in this file could be factored into a user level open GL basics uh, library that then can be used by both slideshow program um, because there's all this stuff so what I'm, what I'm going to put in now is like okay well you start rendering individual triangles and flush triangles which instead of using GL vertex all the time which you could do you know instead what you do is put them into a vertex buffer and then we need all this stuff that you need to do your vertex buffers in OpenGA so immediate, I need the VBO and the VAO and and I need the vertices, and then I need the vertex format because you can have arbitrary vertex formats. So I need to find that. I only need to find one instead of like the three or four that Silverbar needs. So this is just a horrible paste-a-rama at some point, and this is never this is never a good thing to do in the long term. But in the short term, I actually don't mind it because it helps me figure out how things really need to be, and then I can go factor it the right way, right? Instead of just like guessing at how it should be factored and then flailing for a few days because the abstraction border is never quite right, right? You want to discover what the abstraction boundary should be. And then you factor to that. And so then a lot of this code that I'm pasting will get unpasted at that time. I believe Casey does a similar thing on Handling Hero. I don't know for sure. Um, oh, because I'm not loading this. So 
So we're just going to have the same GL version. And, you know, at some point, this would be stuff that you specify to whatever the library is. We're going to copy this stuff. We're not going to copy the HDR buffer and shadow map stuff, I don't think, or any of this matrix stuff. Oh, we already have back buffer. So, okay, new HDR, we pasted that, but we're not going to have an HDR back buffer at this time, so we're going to get rid of that. Let's get our dump GL errors. Buffer. Okay, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do the shadow map. Current shader. Oh, shader. We need that. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to factor. We don't really, I think I've been keeping Sokoban stuff specific out of the shaders, but there's always, like, you end up caching these locations, and those are a little bit specific to what your shaders happen to be. So that's, that's going to be interesting. Catalog and shader catalog. Catalogs are how we tend to load assets. Um, do that. Okay, so table visit files is in. I don't know where that is. Let's get that. I think it's just here. And then text file stuff. Or is it called text file stuff? Text file handler. We're definitely going to want that. That's the stuff I factored out just the other week for the animation system. Um, Green, green, 2D right-handed. So this stuff is stuff that we're going to also paste in. This, I'm not sure if we do it that way anymore, so we probably change that. Uh, this, we probably create. That, we probably create. This, where does visit files live? That might live in hot loader or something. Is it? Oh, no, it's file utilities. It's in a, yeah, it's in a standard thing. So let's get that. File utilities. Oops. All right, so this is mostly GL stuff still, so let's take care of this. So dump shader info log is being called by, uh, by dump GL errors. And dump program info log. All right, that's fine. Set the vertex format, rendering 2D. Immediate quad, set shader, immediate quad, which immediate quad? Four points and a color, right, because we're 2D. Uh, ARGB color. Where 
is that? Who defines that? Draw. Well, we're going to make our own draw in a bit. But for now, we'll just put these over here. All right, we're getting down to it. Put vertex. So this is a little bit of an inefficient thing. I mean, It's just an abstraction that helps us lay stuff out in the vertex buffer, which we'd probably be better off not having. EBGR, which we'll put next to the ARGB colors. All right. So the back buffer. I think we don't want that. Rendering 2D right-handed is going to be in draw. And that just sets up a matrix. Where is that defined? there. Right, I did. I said before I don't want those matrices, but really I do. Really I do. Okay, so we need set shader. Yeah, you know, a great deal of this, a great deal of this can be factored out. The thing is just, the problem you have is that it's, once you factor it, it's very easy to end up in a place where it doesn't do exactly what you want anymore. So my, I'm opting right now to, like I said, well, also for purposes of knowing the right abstraction boundary, but yeah, I'm not sure. As far as I'm concerned, it's a little bit of an unsolved problem in computing. Um, all right, so current render type, we're just going to get rid of that. That is not for now a thing that we are worried about. Okay, so we just need a shader. Yeah, we're, we're inheriting the fully bananas version of OpenGL with like no fixed function pipeline and all this good stuff because that's, well, that's the future, but you need to, you need to have a lot of uh, mechanisms to, to deal with that. Let's go, I said we're going to want a draw file, so let's let's make that. And what was I going to put in it? I don't know. Okay, so from the other one, Draw. Right. We might as well get text. Uh, 
we're going to init those guys. So we need our shader catalog. And we're going to want this stuff. We're going to want a texture catalog later. Our swap buffers. That's our hot loader. All right. Let's put these things in, comment it out. We'll reset our temporary storage. Starting to look like a program. Right, so we need to provide a way to draw text. Did I not do hot loader? I didn't get hot loader. That's going to be one of the earliest things to get factored into its own library. Okay, shader, ARGB, and texture. He wants both of those. No, I wanted that. All right. Draw text, draw text, and window width. Window width is mine here. And that's just where I'm going to control for now what window size we create. So I'm just going to say window width, what did I say? Um, 1600 window height is going to be 900, and we'll change those. Hey, all right, well, we open a window and then barf, um, which I'm not sure if that's just because we don't respond to anything, and then the compiler gets upset or what. But that's pretty good. We managed to uh, we managed to actually have a program. Let's let's uh, let's make sure it gets all the way to compiling. Um, let's take out the run. Ah, okay. The parts of the program that we needed to use compiled. That's why the window came up. But in in the um, in the bytecode compilation mode, if it knows that some parts of the program are not necessary yet because it has some dependency analysis, then it won't require that they're compiled in order to run what you have because it may be that what you have generates code. Like what we had there may have generated code that defines draw text, for example, uh, which isn't defined. So let's do that. That I think is the last thing that we need though. Draw text. Prep text ours? No. M draw font quads is though. Alright. Immediate quad. Oh, it wants a version of immediate quad that I didn't put in. With UVs. Uh, 
Well, and now that wants to put vertex in it. It wants multiply color normal. This one, probably. Immediate quad. Really? Wait, did I put the wrong? I put a vector three immediate quad. That's why that wanted a normal. I don't want that one. What am I doing? No, I wanted not this one. I wanted vector twos with UVs. I thought that's the one I pasted, but I must have slipped up. Hey, all right, well, it'll probably still crash in part. Well, there's a lot of reasons, um, but let's see. Let's see, oh wait. Debugging information corrupt, recompile module. We're outputting something invalid. That's another compiler bug. Huh. Well, I was going to switch to LLVM anyway so that we can debug, but um, debugging information corrupt, recompile module. All right. So we've got another to do. is why we do these things, so we can find these problems. All right, but since since we're crashing, because I probably just didn't initialize something I need to initialize, um, we want to run an OpenGL or in, in LLVM anyway with the LLVM backend. So So debug, when we set up debug, I can say the backend is not x64, it's going to be LLVM. For example, I could say that anywhere, but I'm going to say it there. All right, so LLVM doesn't fail us. And uh, let's see what happens there. Uh, where does the executable go? Yeah, it's not It opens a window and doesn't do anything and crashes shortly after. Let's see where it crashes. Visual Studio, please start up. Start up. In init shaders. Oh, because we didn't. Oh, okay. So I'm assigning to something. And we didn't find it. If I had said find or create here, then we would have gotten back a pointer to a valid shader. But like I wanted this, really it should probably log if it doesn't find a shader, right? So let's do that. Um, so the, the reason I didn't find the shaders is because I didn't copy them into our deployment area for this application. It doesn't know how to load them from Sokoban. So, uh, but let's go to uh, uh, Sokoban. I'm so confused. Shader. And um, <laughs> right, so uh, find. All right, reload asset. Uh, 
dog prints. Uh, catalog was not able to find asset whatever. That's an error. Um, I forget what the catalogs. Oops. Call my name. My name. All right, so that's still going to crash, but it'll tell us why. Yeah. All right. And we had my if statement there. So actually, we don't crash because I did an if statement. But there we go. We we're not able to find ARGB no texture and ARGB and texture. So let's go to Silkabon run tree data shaders and then text, I believe. As well. Oh, well, let's make a shaders folder. Put these in. And then I don't know if did I did these include anything? No. No. No, they don't include anything. All right. Let's see what happens. Still not able to find. Oh, because I'm not. I'm not setting my. Uh, I'm not setting my catalog folders. So for the catalogs to load things, you got to tell them. Here we go. You got to tell them where to uh, where to look for things because you don't want them looking for things everywhere. Um, not only for speed reasons, but because you want to make sure that they don't pick up files that are not in the area that you're going to package up and ship. Right. So I need a packaged. And that's false right now because we're running with files off the disk. Still no. Really. Set CWD to whatever. Whoa. That's weird. Is this code buggy? That's weird, man. So it's like we're stomping the slash. I don't know why we're doing that. Maybe so that we can, oh, so we can set CWD it. Oh, duh, right, OK. This is actually fine. I think because we've got a zero in it. So basically, uh, you know, our strings have uh, a data pointer and a count. And whenever you pass things into C, you like need to zero terminate them. So I think what C is getting is just this. I could just do this. Well, nah. nah. I'm going to take for granted that that's working.
Well, I'm going to start debugging this. I'm going to say, oh wait, is this after? Duh, no, you, you have to, you have to set up the catalogs and put them in the array before you do something to everybody in the array. That is common sense. All right, so now it found them, and now it's crashing for a different reason, because I forgot something else. I forgot something else. Okay, we're loading a shader. Why is it not giving me the source? Browse and find. Sokoban. All right. So we're loading a shader from memory. OK, so we got the shader text. Shader, the name, this all looks reasonable. GL create shader probably doesn't exist for some reason. Oh, extension, okay. So extensions like loads all this stuff and I didn't init them. So all these GL extensions are null. Including GL create shader. Why init ex extensions? Init GL extensions. Okay, because I'm trying to. Okay, I have to see. This is the kind of annoying stuff that happens. Um, if I do this stuff before I init open GL. Then I try to call to load the shader. I'm trying to use a GL context that does not exist. Well, that's very annoying still. So why is its name null? And its its extensions probably aren't there. See, sometimes you have to be very precarious about the order in which things happen. There we go. Okay, at least it knows what it is. It still is not able to find the asset. Um, I'm not sure why. Not able to find assets. Well, catalog loose files. Oh, no, because, right, because I tried to put my init shaders. This is the problem with when you copy a bunch of another program and not quite enough. We can't init our shaders yet. We have to do, this must happen after the shader catalog, after files so we can find the shaders. Okay, we found them. Now what? Now what is the problem? Maybe maybe it's not. Maybe it's still 
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's still the same damn problem. So, um, I'm in init shaders, reload asset, and extensions is totally zero. Make sure um, init shaders, that's where we are, right? Init shaders. So this happened after init window and OpenGL, which calls init OpenGL, which calls init GL extensions, which I'm just going to print extensions is whatever. File extension. Dear OpenGL, what is your problem? Okay, that's interesting. Because I would have expected this print statement to happen. Like, do I have multiple calls to init shaders and I forgot to delete one of them? Something like that? Let's see. Let's see where we are on the call stack. So we're in init shaders from main. What is this? Give me the right. OK, so now this is Visual Studio getting confused about what frickin' file we're in because we have files by the same name. I don't know how to tell it. This is the wrong file. Open a different file. Well, it's being called from main line 94 in a different main than what Visual Studio What the hell? That seems fine. Wait, init window calls init OpenGL. Oh, this is a different init OpenGL. Right. This one, right, because remember I said I don't want all that baggage. So I'm not calling this one. I'm calling this one. True. True. We're just going to always be in windowed mode and update. Oh, this should be an OpenGL. Wait, what? Right. OK, now I see what I did. So I have two overloads of init OpenGL. And right, I did copy one and chop it down, but that's not the one that I'm actually calling. So let's get rid of this. Um, and let's change which one we're calling. We're going to init OpenGL. True, true. So we're always going to be in windowed mode and we're always going to vsync. And we'll get rid of this because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we already have that. Oops. Close.
Hey. Okay. It doesn't do anything yet. Um, so we'll at least GL clear. Let's see. One frame. We're going to uh, draw slideshow. After all this, we're going to actually, I'm going to say GL clear color 0101, zero, one, zero, one. and then GL clear. I forget the arguments to GL clear. You set like the bits that you're going to clear. This is so slow. All right. Do this. So let's see if we get a green screen. Oh, because I think I'm in C++. Hey, we got a green screen. All right. So this is good progress. Um, I was just about the time when I want to go out and do something fun for the evening, but a green screen is probably not quite enough. So I'm going to try and draw some text, and we'll see, we'll see how far we get there. So to draw a text, um, well, we have to set our shader. So let's do that. OK, so we're going to clear. We're going to set the shader. We're going to render in 2D right-handed unit scale, which means 0 to 1, because our for some reason, our text drawing routine wants us to do that, even though you know, whatever. Um, we'll immediate begin. We're going to draw some other things, too, but we'll immediate flush. Draw text. Who draws text? All right. Okay, so we're going to get a font. We're going to say font is that. We're going to say we're going to have our nice draw centered routine. Now let's take that out. Let's put that down here. We're going to say draw centered font color y and uh, hello sailor y is int back buffer height times 0.5 uh, color is Let's see if I have make factor 4 I don't have unit scale. That's just an alternate version of rendering 2D right-handed. Where did I put the OpenGL? Yeah, that should probably go. Should probably go and draw because OpenGL doesn't. Oh, I don't know where it should go. I, this is the whole point. I don't know. I don't know where things should go. Okay, so now we need this stuff. So this probably should get less uh, 
less hard coded. We're going to have font folder. Um, what else did we want? We wanted a size. Let's just see what size it complains about. Backup font name. Big font size. All right. Float versus integer. Oh, it wants float. All right. Interesting. We don't have the fonts in our font folder yet. Let's just copy all those. Because we'll just have a variety of things to play with. And oh, try to immediate flush when no shader was set. Did I? I said said that thing about setting the shader, and then I never set it. So uh, set shader shader text. Really. Zero. Why is it zero? Did I not load it? No, I didn't load it. Is it called text? Let's just copy that line. All right, well, it's not appearing on the screen. I'm not sure why. Um, this could be the time when we bust out render doc. Maybe I need to set it before I set the. I never remember the conventions of when I need to set things. Um. Hmm. Oh, I need to. Let's do it. Let's see what RenderDoc says about what just happened there. If I have it. I am not ever updating RenderDoc because it's so flaky every time I update it. This version happens to work. Uh, show run tree show debug.exe launch allow access. Oh, I don't even. So I never even go into the Windows input loop. So it's like not letting me capture. I can probably capture here, trigger. All right. I wish people outside would stop honking at each other. OK, so GLDraw arrays. Mesh output. I don't know. GL position looks. Maybe this doesn't want unit scale. Maybe I'm confused about the unit scale thing. Let me go back. Oh, we don't want unit scale. I am a fool. OK, it still didn't appear on the screen, I don't think.
Well, that doesn't really look any different in terms of the output coordinates. Why is it going from like minus two to... I have something messed up in how I'm setting my transforms or something. <sighs> Let me close a bunch of these. Uh, Visual Studio, I don't want to save. I don't want to save. I don't want to save. Why do you think I want to save? I'm just trying to use it to debug. So this is one of these things where like I copied a bunch of engine code and something isn't happening to like the fact that it's it's giving it vertices the color is correct Either the vertex format is wrong or something else is wrong. I don't know which one. What should I do to debug? Oh, well, first of all, I should make sure the font freaking loaded. Let's do that. Because remember, I don't have good, like, logging yet. So often, if things fail, it'll be a little bit invisible. Oh, be better. Well, so font is a dynamic font with that name, with glyph lookup and ascenders and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it, it looks loaded, I guess. Except, no, it's not, it's not correctly loaded. Because all this ascender descender stuff is set to like one pixel, which is no good. Um, why? Oh, because we don't ever set it. Because we used to set it, you know. We used to set it based on, you know, whatever we dynamically set for our uh, window size, but <laughs> so, so we asked it for a zero size font. Hey, there's a hello sailor. Um, I don't know why it's down in the corner, but let's, oh, because our back buffer width is probably Probably not setting that correctly. Yeah. So that's set to zero, so we're centering it by making it zero. So, um, so when we call init OpenGL, we're calling it with. Control paths return value. Yeah. All right. 
There we go. Well, that's not good. Fifteen seventy four, right? So this is sixteen hundred minus windows is like border width and all that stuff, um, and y is halfway up the window, and so that that should be right. Let me see. No, the unit scale is not going to be the right thing either. So so y. Let's just see. Because we saw part of the text before. Wow, that's a hell of a Y coordinate, wouldn't you say? Why is it? It's back buffer height times. Oh, so I need to get my thing right. So this should be 0.5 because that's like in unit scale. All right, that's enough. That is all I really wanted to achieve today. I would do a victory check-in if I had added this to source control yet, which I haven't. Um, and now I broke Sokoban, which is, of course, something I'll have to go back and fix. But um, so this is good. This is all I wanted to get done tonight. So this was a bunch of ugly cutting and pasting and stuff, um, which is not real software development by any means. Um, but it got us into a position to do some long-term evolution on this program uh, that's going to draw slides. And so it's got graphics on the screen, which uh, as long as you can do that, you're winning. You know, it's doing so. so it's loading fonts. Uh, it's got the hot loader set up, right? So when we, when we go to make a slide file format, it'll be able to hot load that format. Um, it's initting OpenGL successfully. So it's really kind of a non-trivial application at this point. Um, so I think, so now one thing it doesn't do yet is it doesn't handle input. So I can't even move the, oh, I can move the window. Uh, it just, it's not, the cursor is not responding really well. And, um, you know, I can't, if I were to type anything, the program wouldn't have a way to listen to it. So we need to do input. Um, next time, and then I guess we start doing the actual slideshow part next time. Uh, but first, I'm going to go out and take a break tonight and go see some people and whatnot. Are there any questions about what happened here? Like, about what the heck I was doing with all these things, the pastings and the whatnot? Someone says it might be worth stowing this away to save the startup time on your next project. That would be true if I was going to start every project this way, but I don't think so. Um, so definitely what we'll do when we release the compiler, we'll have a sample program that's like the sample program that draws text on the screen and reads input. Um, but it probably won't have some of the things that I put in here. Like it probably won't have the hot loader. It probably won't have the catalogs, right? Um, and in terms of the rest of the stuff, it'll be more simplified because like I said, what I, one of the things I'm trying to do now is identify where the boundaries are that things should be factored at 
And once we provide that sample program, that factoring will have happened. So um, it, like this thing that I did today is probably not something that ever happens again exactly the same way. It'll be easier next time. I'm not answering off-topic questions. Why don't I use my alt key like Emacs intends? I don't know. I'm, I'm relatively minimal in terms of my Emacs shortcuts. I use a small number of things. What the heck did I just do? Yeah. Um, at which point in development of show are you going to say it's time to refactor by comparing after you've done with it or some point before? Some point before. Because um, I don't know, I don't know how you define done on this, right? So the the vague roadmap is well, I'm going to make a text file format that says what the you know what slides can have, um, and then uh, you know then maybe I start adding more features uh, to what the text file format can support. Maybe I start doing the graphical editor. Um, but I, you know, both of those things are kind of open-ended, and I, and there, this program is not the priority, right? So my goal in the near future is to get it to a point where I can use it to do the presentations that I want to give, and then it'll just kind of be hanging out. Uh, and so maybe, you know, maybe at that point, right? Maybe in a month or two, when it's basic, uh, but um, but enough of a program to make sense and it's not something that I'm primarily working on at the moment, it's a good time to pause and factor. Why was the function called slide how? I don't think it was, was it? Oh, it is. Let's fix that. Maybe that's a good name for it is slide how. That's a, that's a good good name for a program. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming by. Um, I'm going to try to do another stream of this soon, possibly tomorrow evening. And uh, I'll pick up where I left off, and I'll do input, and I'll do uh, some very simple file format that just says slide text. And so by the end of the next session, we'll certainly be able to flip around between different slides, um, I would guess, with text and background colors. And then after that, we'll decide where the functionality should go. Thanks very much. See you guys later. Is OpenGL worth learning and using? I don't know, man. Ask other people about that. I don't know. I don't like OpenGL very well. Uh, but I don't know what you could use that's better. So life is rough.